When Doom Eternal released for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC in March of 2020, I really considered picking it up for one of those systems. But then I remembered how much fun I had playing Doom 2016 on the go for my Nintendo Switch. So I figured it would be worthwhile waiting for it to release on the Switch, and maybe I could try to catch it on sale. When Doom Eternal finally released for the Switch in December of 2020, I noticed that it didn't release as a physical version, but digital only. This was a bit disappointing for me as I like to have my Switch games in physical form for the most part. But it wasn't a deal breaker by any means. A few months ago I happened across a sale for Doom Eternal on the eShop for $29.99 USD and thought now is the time to pick it up. So now that I have spent my fair share of time with Doom Eternal on the Switch, it's time to answer the question, what's it worth? Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of What's It Worth, where I review a game, show a little gameplay, and give an idea of what a game is worth. I would like to ask for anyone who enjoys my content, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It really does help and lets me know that you are enjoying the content. I understand I'm a little slow on uploads between technical difficulties, lack of time, and life, but I do try my best to get these uploads for you as soon as I can. I hope to one day be able to post videos regularly, and for those who have already subscribed or considered subscribing, I appreciate your patience and support. With that said, let's continue. Please know, I understand a game is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. Obviously anyone is able to have their own opinion on what they like and dislike and have the freedom to buy and pay whatever they feel is reasonable. This is just my opinion based on the content within a game, the age of a game, how long it is, replayability, if there is a multiplayer available, and how good that multiplayer is. I have spent many years buying and playing games and have a general idea of what I feel I should be paying. This is simply to give you an idea or baseline of what a game is worth. And if money is no object, this is still a general review so there is still something here for you. So let's get started. Doom 2016 for the Switch was one of my early reviews on this channel. The link is in the description if you'd like to watch that review. Doom 2016 was the first Doom game ever that I got the pleasure of playing. It drew me in almost instantly with the super fast paced shoot 'em up gameplay, badass melee finishers, sick enemies, and so much more. I enjoyed it so much that I did something that I rarely do. I purchased it twice, once close to the release for my PlayStation 4, then again years later on my Switch so I could slay badass demons on the go. This made the anticipation for Doom Eternal extremely high for me. Although, when I first booted up Doom Eternal, I was immediately turned off by the game because it required me to log into Bethesda to be able to utilize the game's online features. I don't know about those of you who are watching this video, but I do not make a habit of signing up for accounts with game developers just to play their game that I paid for. This definitely did not sit well with me. However, what could I do if I wanted to play the game online? I then noticed that there's a lot of clutter on the home screen once you log into Bethesda, which also wasn't great. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about purchasing this game. I will say that this will not affect my rating, but it's not a great start. Doom Eternal's campaign took me approximately 15 hours to complete. The story is set sometime after the events that transpired in Doom 2016. You are once again the Doom Slayer trying to save Earth from Hell's invasion by hunting down Hell Priests and trying to defeat the main antagonist, Con Maker. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I will say that there is a decent amount of story hidden in the codexes that can be collected in each level. These codexes will expand on the plot. I myself collected a bunch of them and at first would read them right away, but eventually I just wanted to kick ass and take names with the non-stop action and lost interest in reading the codexes. Personally, I could take or leave the story of Doom Eternal. I didn't feel as if there was anything that made it particular, particularly memorable and would be something that I'd likely skip if I ever replay the campaign. This game has tons of items that can be collected during the campaign, such as toys, albums, cheat codes, and much more. 
I personally love collecting the toys and albums, and the best part was, once you collect these items, you can go ahead and decorate your fortress with them. This became an enjoyable experience on its own. There are secret missions that can be completed during the campaign for different awards as well. All in all, the story did have enjoyable things to offer, even if I wasn't a fan of the storyline itself. I played the story on the Hurt Me Plenty difficulty, and it definitely hurt me plenty, so to speak. I usually don't talk about the sound in a game, but for Doom Eternal, how could I not? First and foremost, the music has to be one of the most satisfying parts of Doom Eternal. Nothing gets you more amped up to take down hordes of demons like heavy metal music, but that's not all. The weapon sounds like the super shotgun blasting enemies or the sound of the explosions from the rocket launcher raining down hell is just simply amazing. On top of that, there's the sound of the melee and the finishers just ripping and tearing through enemies. All in all, the sound and music in Doom Eternal is simply awesome. As for the graphics, well at least for the Switch edition, they aren't perfect by any means. But we have to remember that this is a port of a game on a device that can be played on the go. With lesser hardware than that of the consoles like PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, Panic Button did an amazing job porting this game. The game may have some muddy textures and may not be the most detailed graphically, but this game by no means looks bad. And as I said in the Doom 2016 review, which still stands here with Doom Eternal, once the action starts as fast as it does with Doom games, you hardly notice that the graphics aren't what you might get from one of the other consoles or PC. The game itself runs great. I noticed the very occasional stutter, and only on seven occasions, yes I counted, did the game actually seem to have harsh stuttering or heavy frame rate dips none of which ruined my experience. Doom Eternal is really all about the gameplay. Doom's fast-paced first-person shooter gameplay, satisfying melee finishers, and badass weaponry is what makes Doom such an enjoyable experience. The guns all have crazy cool upgrades that just enhance that can of whoop-ass that you are laying down on enemies. With the heavy metal music playing in the background, the flashes of colorful lights from your guns firing rounds, and the enemies' insides just painting the surrounding areas, there is a ton of excitement in Doom Eternal's gameplay, especially if you want to take it on the go with the Nintendo Switch. Doom Eternal does have its fair share of puzzles. The puzzles are a nice diversion from the action and really weren't too hard. Although I did find some of the jump puzzles to be annoying. For some reason, it felt like the jumping was off sometimes, and I fell to my death a lot. But I'm pretty sure it had something to do with something I was doing wrong, and not the game itself. I also personally found that controls were wonky, and it took some time for me to get the settings adjusted, and even then I had to work at getting precision shots. I typically use a pro controller when playing my Switch, but I do use the Joy-Cons when I'm on the go. Neither were perfect, and I did try the motion controls, but I could never get the hang of it. It's amazing that a game like this was able to be ported over to the Switch. Yes, there are some drawbacks here and there, but it is something to admire. I definitely found a lot of enjoyment in this game from being able to play that fast-paced first-person shooter gameplay on the go. This game does have some replayability value. After the credits roll, the game gets more difficulty settings that players can return to play. There are also master levels, which are reimagined versions of levels played within the campaign. These do change periodically, so there is the ability to come back every so often to get a different level to play. I played the current one and didn't really see what all the fuss was about, but all in all it was something to return to try out. As I mentioned earlier, the game does have a bunch of secret missions, codexes, and collectibles. If these were missed, this could be another reason to, for players to return to Doom Eternal. The multiplayer in this game was by far the biggest letdown for me. Personally, when Doom 2016's multiplayer was alive and well, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I loved playing Team Deathmatch against other Death Slayers, and it reminded me of the Halo 3 multiplayer with a twist. However, that is not what we got with Doom Eternal. 
Doom Eternal system is a 1v2 match where one player is the Doom Slayer and has to go up against two other players who are demons. It wasn't necessarily a bad part of the game, it just wasn't something I wanted to spend a few hours playing. After a handful of games, I was on to something else. It wasn't what I was hoping for. The multiplayer did take a few minutes to get into a match, and often I would keep playing with the same few people. There was often disconnects in the lobby as well. I would say that there is a few people trying to matchmake in this game, but it is very limited. Doom Eternal did provide me with some badass demon slaying for the time that I spent with it. The gameplay, even with the wonky controls and the graphics not being the best ever, still made for an enjoyable experience. The story wasn't its strength, not that it should be, but Doom Eternal did leave me with some things to be desired. Two of my favorite things about Doom 2016 were not present in Doom Eternal. One being the multiplayer where Doom Slayers battle each other, and the other was the arcade mode which was a game mode that allowed players to collect points for kills and to see how they stack up against others in the community and their friends. This did not make Doom Eternal bad, it just took some of my favorite parts from, do from Doom 2016 out. So what's it worth? Doom Eternal's campaign took me approximately 15 hours to complete. Even though, for me, the story was not the strength of the game, the gameplay was enough to keep the enjoyment going. The game has some replayability value and does have a multiplayer, even though it does have limited players still playing. With all that said, this game is worth about $30. Now, make sure you stay tuned for Frequently Asked Questions. Frequently Asked Questions. How much space does it take up on my Switch? I went ahead and took a look at Doom Eternal, and it takes up 24.5 gigabytes on my Switch. Can it be played offline? Yes, but only the campaign. Is the multiplayer alive? It's alive, but barely. Thank you all for tuning in. As always, I hope this helps you with your decision on whether or not to purchase Doom Eternal, and or was able to give you an idea of what to pay for this game. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you all so much. Later.